Give me the dope. Uh. I'll do it the first time and then you join in with me. Alright, here you go. Help me. Help me lift him up. When I was young, I started playing music in the church. Help me. Help me lift him up. My dad is a minister. My mom was the choir director. Me being a guy that doesn't use profanity, not smoking, not drinking, I didn't think I could make it as one of the number one trap producers in the rap game. Trap music is like, I feel like it's like people from the struggle. We came from not having anything. We came from being on EBT, being poor. It was a little community. So the only thing we knew how to do is rap. So that's why we call it trap. We know how to sell dope. That's, that's the struggle, so people talk about that. And then now it just became cool where everybody wants to do it. So now it's like it's his own genre of music. And Zaytoven started it, he the champ. There wouldn't be no trap music without Zaytoven, I'll tell you. Trap music equals Zato. That's it. <laughs> you can't name a rapper that ain't been through Atlanta or came through the South or doing anything and popping, and they ain't got no song with Zato. Yo, Gotti start coming. Gucci, OJ, Fresh, Migos, Future. Work with Nicki Minaj down there. Anybody who was hot in Atlanta at the time was in that basement, man. From 10 o'clock to when I got up to go to work in the morning, he had people here uh, making music. This basement right here, that motherfucker polluted a lot of shit. I was listening to rap music when I wasn't allowed to listen to rap music. I had to sneak and listen to it. But my parents didn't want me to listen to music with profanity and all that in it. My early favorites would have had to be Dr. Dre, the Chronic album. And it was so rough and rugged. The language was just so terrible that I was like, man, I got to sneak and listen to this. It never was the words, really. It was just how they put the music together that had me addicted to it. Before people ever came over here, it was just him and his brothers just making music. Then it just started evolving until it just turned into like, Zay Mama House is just the spot. So everybody want to go record at Zay Mama House. We're going to the basement now. <laughs> this is where the studio used to be. Zay used to have his big music mixing board or whatever you want to call it. Right back here was the mic booth. Dang, what this make, this bring back memories right here. If you type up Gucci Man early stuff, Yo Gotti, Rocco, all those guys, you'll see them in this mic booth. You'll see them in this booth right here. This is what Xavier called mom's basement. <laughs> when I first actually went to Zay told my mom's house and found out Zay had a recording studio in the basement, it was like shocking. I thought we was gonna pull up at some, you know, like a building with a suite in it. So when we pulled up at the house, like, oh, okay, we'll go in. I'm like, buddy, it's your mama's house. They were coming all times of the night. The street was getting full with cars, and driveway was getting full with cars. Man, he, he got busy. I didn't know where that was over the house, man. I didn't know how we was yeah. about. The house rules Xavier knew, and no smoking was one of them, and definitely in the house. I'm thinking this studio, gonna smoke, gonna drink. So I fired it up in there, and she can't fight it down. No drinking in the house, no weapons, no cursing. My dad was just retired from the military, so he was militant. He the guy to come down and say, hey, man, this ain't no studio. Hey, I'll come and turn all this stuff off. <laughs> so you kind of almost had to tiptoe around my dad because, you know, he didn't really get it, you know, at first. My rates was like $25 an hour. I had a little mixing rates, I think, for $100. I used to have a barber chair sitting right here. I was selling haircuts, too. You know, a lot of the artists might want to come and get their haircut while they're here. It was the little barber chair, the whole setup, like a real barber shop in the studio. I'm like, man, your mama let you cut hair here too? 
I felt like being a barber was definitely one of the ways I was gonna make my money and survive. And that's how I hustled and, and made a living without having to go work at Burger King or McDonald's or, or whatever. Everybody know what you're getting into when you come in Zay Basement. It's gonna be work, but at the end of the day, we're gonna make it fun. The workflow was like ridiculous. Like, you talk about knocking out songs, like, we was knocking out songs like left and right. It was like boot camp for like up and coming artists. Well, I'm from Cleveland Avenue. It's the hood for real. Ain't too many people were successful over there doing nothing. By Zay Basement giving me an opportunity where I can go somewhere and record where I ain't gotta go and pay all this high money to record. Zay got the studio, Zay recording me, Zay got the beats. Zay got all the powerful people coming in. It made people believe that we all can achieve that we believe. I think what he was doing, playing in the church, working at the barbershop, coming here and making beats and just having people meet him here, I mean, it was like, we were all one big happy family. As soon as you came in that house, they had probably spiritually had developed it to be so conducive to carry that kind of background of people that would come in there. And that's why that place is so special. Gucci Man was one of the first ones that was here. He spent a lot of time here. Certain people you just start gelling with and start wanting to see more of. Gucci was one of those guys that was born to be a star. And on top of that, he was just like the grimiest, streetest dude I ever seen in my life. And Gucci was dope, you know? And he was a workaholic. Every morning, say, what, what you doing today? You know, this is 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. You up yet? All right, cool, I'm brushing my teeth. I'm gonna come over. Say so he put a beat on, and Gucci go crazy. Oh, man, no, he like a real MC. He wants you to listen to his verse, what you think, and then they'll just sit in there and write. That combination, of those guys working together in that basement created that sound that is just undeniable right now. Yeah, Gucci Man is in the building. So I said, the time, they told me on the track. When I started doing music with Gucci, it was the birth of a certain sound of trap music. It's me making a beat in five minutes. The bass might be too loud. You barely can hear the clap. The piano's too low. Gucci's saying stuff that you can't hardly understand. He off tempo. They added a certain street to it, a certain trap to it. It sound rough. I mean, beats you doing on this new mixtape, Zay? All love. We were definitely one of the first guys to bring imperfection into trap music. When I first went down in the basement with him, his wiring was all jacked up, you know what I'm saying? And it's crazy because it gave him a distinct sound. It sounded like it just came straight out of the trash can. That was a certain type of trap music that's different than what Young Jeezy and T.I. was doing, because they was making real quality music. We was doing it, it was just something totally different. It was just like unpolished. The sound of trap music that's known today by the younger generation is what me and Gucci created. Play it from the top so he can vibe to it, bro. I want to hear it from the top anyway. Gucci, man, was one of the roughest guys I ever met in my life. But this is my main guy. This is the guy I'm with 24-7. Now, how did we click so much? I don't know. I feel like that's God really putting me in position. But I guarantee it was definitely a spark when he introduced me to other people, I mean, big time rappers or guys that's in the streets, you know, the first thing he say, hey man, this Zay told me, this my producer. He don't cuss, he don't drink, he don't smoke. That's like, well, bro, you ain't gotta say all that. But it was something for him to brag on. This is a guy that every street guy, they look up to him. And he looks at me and brags about how I am. I learned that guys like that, that's in that lifestyle, they admire other people for being themselves. And it gave me the confidence to be like, you know what? I'm in the right place, and I'm doing the right thing. When I think about a Zaytoven record, the first thing I think about is him playing that dang keyboard. Everybody can make a beat, 
But Zay, he magic. He magic with them keys. Zay a musician, like that what he do. My sound had got mimicked so much. Every time I listen to the radio or if I listen to a mixtape, it's like, dang, those are the beats I was making. So I said, well, let me start adding stuff I feel like these guys can't do. Well, his stuff sound like church. Every time that man touched the piano, I hear church. I hear God. Worship. We've been booked in places like Nashville. As soon as we get out of there at 2 o'clock in the morning, everybody's drunk but him. We got to smash the gas back to Atlanta. Why? Because it's Sunday morning. And he's going to go right in church and do his consistent duties. I am the lead musician of the church, and I've been here for about 11 years. You know, it's always a place for me to go to to get back balance and focus. People have asked me, how do you let him go out, you know, and do secular music, you know, and come to church on Sunday morning and play? Well, I don't see him doing anything other than making beats, you know. Don't you go for a secular job every day? If he tell you he got to do something with his church, like practice, that's what it is. You ain't going to be able to talk him out of it. You ain't gonna be able to pay him not to go do it. I believe it was Snoop Dogg was at his house and there was a recording or something and he got up and left. And then he got back and it was like, where did you go? He said, I had to go play for my church. If the music stuff got taken away from me tomorrow, it's like, oh, that's cool, you know? But I don't know how it would function if I feel like, okay, now you can't go to church no more for the rest of your life. I think my parents opening up the doors for everybody to come in, no matter what they look like or what they smelled like, weed or whatever, it's a part of ministry. They can't relate to a church or a pastor, but they can relate to a, a young guy that's making music they listen to. His faith, it influences everything about him. Everybody say he's an old soul. So even at a young age, he was much more mature. This music stuff wasn't never a dream or, or something I was, you know, striving to be in or, I, you know, when I get older, I'm gonna be a producer or none of that stuff. I just feel like, you know, God put me in this position maybe because of my character or maybe because I'm the type of person that can influence other people in a certain way. You know, a lot of these guys, their mama might be in church a lot. They might have been made to go to church when they were young. You know, they just might have kind of started living a different lifestyle. You know, and the church is like the backbone of the community. The trap in the church, they meet somewhere in the middle because it's all still a certain life that somebody's living. It's still ups and downs that people got to go through. So a lot of these guys that's rapping or been selling dope or doing whatever, they still got a heart and they still got a soul. Bankroll has been a part of our family since he was a young boy. He was just like a little permanent fixture, really, because he was always around. Fresh, he was a guy that, if I'm going down to see my grandma in Columbus, he'd ride with me. We just rock with each other so much that, you know, we are with each other all the time. I remember hearing about bankroll being shot. I was like, what, for real? So to hear that, oh, he didn't make it, it broke my heart. He was just over here two days ago. What you mean? It was really rough. At the funeral it was, after the funeral, and weeks and weeks to come. You know, he didn't say a whole lot, but you could tell there was a, a huge void. When Fresh died, that was real close. That was more closer than my own father died because we was around each other every single day. Laughing and giggling, playing with the kids all day. I felt like Bankroll Fresh was going to be one of the biggest guys in the game. Bro was a very talented artist. Like, he had stupid potential. Studio, 
family. That's it. Hustle. We never thought that Bankroll would leave that early. There's not too many days that go by where he just stops and just had to just grab itself, thinking about what happened or what could have been or what should have been. There's some real street dudes in this music industry, and I think they in it and they real passionate about it because they're trying to get out of the street. This is what he told me one time. He said, Pops, it's, it's not about money. It's all about relationship. No, even though money is a part of it, it's really, really, really about relationship. Because all that stuff that we got could be gone. I feel like my job is to be the example. It's just me trying to live a certain way and not so much just talking about it. I didn't never want to be the guy where, man, you need to do this or you need to do that. Because a lot of times you can push people away. I look at Gucci today and I look at his lifestyle and the way he is. That lets me know lives change. God didn't give us the gift of just to hold on to it for ourselves and just use it whenever we think we need it. It's for us to spread it, give it to other people.